So later on in life, I'll probably dislike this engineering, but that brake line right there, that runs along there, I ran it through the inner fender. <laughs> I'm probably gonna regret that later, but uh, I like it. I'm just gonna leave it. I put a grommet there, we're gonna call it. All right, and then my other one, I'm kind of proud of it, so I wanted to, look, I'm not a mechanical dude. I'm a body guy. So this is the brake line for the other side. Starts the master cylinder and weaves its way down to the cross member. But I didn't want it coming through on the other side, like I said on one of the last videos, because I didn't want it tucked up next to the exhaust. So it's going on the back side of the cross member. Then, let me see if I can do this better. Back side of the cross member, then coming across the top and tucking up next to the front of the cross member and going under up in there. So it's vague, I'm gonna say vaguely bent and ready to go up and get its uh, its finishing. Whew. And then, I don't know, then I might be done for the day. <laughs> I did brake lines and is that all I did today? God, it feels like I've been out here all day and I think I have, but I don't know that I've accomplished a lot. Just some little stuff and a lot of organizing to go back through and I need to get all my bolts out. And I had to go through this giant pile of truck parts and kind of start making my list and all that. God, I feel like there was something else. Huh. <laughs> That's sad. Probably not. Been out here most of the day just dealing with that kind of crap. Um, yeah, that's it. Let's get this brake line on so I can call it a night. So my feeling is, whenever you go to attempt to start, you should always have the camera on. Good, bad, or otherwise, you got to document. So this is going to be the first attempt to start this thing since the frame swap. So good, bad, or otherwise, let's see what happens. All right, I don't have the neutral safety switch hooked to the clutch right now, so I got to kind of trick it into thinking that it's going to it can start. All right, let's see if we can feel pump. Oh, oh, pump! I heard pump. Oh, that's promising. I hear fuel back there. Let's try again. This was kind of, yeah, that fluid's brake fluid that you're seeing there from my brake lines yesterday. All right, I'm gonna kill it. Check the oil. And then uh, probably fire it back up. It's probably gonna need a little bit of oil. Because I filled it minus the oil filter. I put a new filter on and changed oil when we did this swap. Um, obviously because the pan was off, but I figured I better change the filter 
also I had already changed it when we put it in here so fair I start from scratch so I'm gonna kill it check the oil and probably fire it back up and add some antifreeze but hey this is a positive look at this thing runs now if it stops and moves under its own power we'll figure that out in the next day or two i'm just glad it fires back up back out on the truck tonight and working on the airbox setup so when we've had it running in the past we just kind of had the box just sitting in here the air box and it was time for it to find a secure home so i went, <laughs> went to pick and pull today and bought another box assembly so i could have another set of hoses and the bracket and then i realized what we were missing from the air box from the this engine and drivetrain and everything is out of a 92 f-150 so this is a box out of a i think a 90 that I found at Pick and Pull today. So that box, which is the same as this box that I had already, on the 92 came over here and the box mounted this way. So the end of the box was leaning against the inner fender and then it had that snout right there that came down on the 90, 90 92-ish and it mounted to the front of the radiator support behind the grill. So I actually thought about taking the box and mounting it this way and putting the intake through the inner fender. But the only problem with that, on these styles of trucks, there's no splash shield in there. So anything your tire and wheel and everything kicks up goes straight up into the inner fender. And which would go right into the snout of the airbox. So I decided to go back to original design of what Cam and I, or what Cam had done more than anything, not I, um, kind of flipped the hoses around, set it up. So now it's going to sit this way and the intake is now going to be where I cut this giant hole in my firewall, not firewall, core support. So you can kind of see where it's gonna come through there. So I will probably just eventually have to put some kind of deflector or some something to protect that snout so water doesn't go straight flying in there if I'm driving in the rain. Um, that's not uncommon though. Um, either that or maybe a turn down or something. I don't know. I'll do something. I've got a little bit of room here. Um, but for now, I just need to get this box mounted so I can secure all of this. I need to get my wiring just secure i was talking to cam about it tonight just want to make it so it's not going to get hurt anywhere and i need to get this thing dropped on the ground so i can drive it see what's going on so this is where we're at i cut that hole just put some paper in here just so all those metal shavings wouldn't go down in that crease down in there and that pocket and just sit there and rust i did make a pretty good mess but i think i protected a little bit so i'm gonna get that box mounted that box mounted in yeah and see if we can make progress i think i'll have to make some kind of i don't know that i'll be able to utilize that bracket i was hoping to but i think it'd be a bunch whole bunch of work for nothing i think i'm just going to make a bracket out of some uh, strap steel i think that'll work better so sometimes i wonder when i started this thing the f100 day challenge Sometimes I wonder, how did I miss the time frame so bad? How? I had all these parts, two and a half trucks, put them together to make one truck. Didn't have to be perfect. Kind of wanted it to be painted. Just, but it didn't have to be perfect. Just needed to run, look decent, and you know, have a nice stance, and, and just be a decent truck and take it on power tour. Here, two plus years later. Nights like tonight, I remember how I missed that. <laughs> when it takes me about four hours 
to mount an air box. Jesus. So what I did, I took the the bracket that I bought at Pick and Pull. I trimmed it all down, cut a lot of weight off of it. Left the two mounting tabs, obviously, for the box to mount to the bracket. Um, I cut that hole in there. I had um, this bracket that came off of, well, I'm going to call it a large tab that came off of the box bracket. I think it was there originally for um, a washer fluid and overflow tank, I think slid in next to the air box on the F-150, on the 90-ish F-150. So I think that's what it was there for. But I just thought, maybe I can utilize that for the mounting somehow. Because I needed the box to lift up, so it was it was a great angle. And it's a heavy bracket. It's heavier, or it's a heavy tab. It's heavier than the bracket itself, the steel is. And it's got these, um, and for strength, these kind of beads in it for strength. So it's pretty damn strong. So... I thought, what the heck? I dug through all my crap and I found two rubber mounts that elevated it about an inch, inch and a half off the inner fender. Drilled a couple of holes, put those in there, drilled a couple of extra holes in this tab, mounted it, set the box in there, slid it into the hole. Um, it gave me the perfect amount of clearance over this electrical stuff. Jesus, I think it's sleeting outside. It was 75 degrees today, folks, <laughs> in the Kansas City area. And three hours later, it's sleeting. That's got to be what that is out there. It's supposed to go from 75 today to like 15 tonight. Like a 60 degree temperature swing here in Kansas City area. Absolutely insane. And then by the weekend, it's going to be back up in the 60s and 70s. It's just crazy. Anyway, back to the box. So... Once I got it mounted, I took the, started working with the tubes and took this one. I ended up having to cut about three quarters of an inch off of it to shorten it up so it'd bring it closer to the box. Took about the same off here, three quarter ish off there so it would, you know, get in there in the right angle. This one took a little bit longer. Um, because it took me forever to dig through and find what I needed. So um, I got a lot of crap in this shop and I save everything. Hence the reason I have these two rubber mounts for um, this bottom thing. I think they were off of like an AC condenser of something that I had worked on in my history of body work and production collision repair. Um, so I dug through and I found a sleeve. So I used this one, which is an original one, cut off about four or five inches of another one, sleeved it, and it was tight. So that's good. It's a sleeve similar to this. Um, didn't have the big knobs on them like, like this. This is the one you use for radiator hoses. Um, this sleeve actually was a gas filler neck of some type from one of the trucks I've had in the past that I kept because I thought, you know what, I'm going to need this piece for something someday. Well, today was that day. So I cut about a three to four inch sleeve, slid it in between there. It was super tight to get into this one. This one it went into pretty good. So I got that mounted and I think we're good to go. So I didn't fire it because <laughs> now that I got it all mounted, I think I'm going to take it back off tomorrow and blow it all out just to make sure I don't have any funky metal shavings, debris. I did all kinds of trimming and cutting and there's going to be rubber chunks because I had to trim. I don't know. Still could be acorns in them. I don't know. Probably better take it back apart, blow it all out, um, make sure everything is good to go before I fire up the engine and suck whatever might be in there into the engine. So I'll play it safe on that. It's getting too late to try to drop this thing down and make it move anyway. So we're just going to let it go until uh, tomorrow or the next day. Depends on how this weather goes. Stay tuned. Here it is. The STD list. So I'm knocking some stuff out, but wow, what a weekend and what a mess. Um, oh, I... Massage the rear wheel tubs. Um, I've got headlights and taillights 
no brake lights or turn signals yet. Um, this was a big one. <laughs> it took quite a while, but I finally have some front turning clearance. Um, yeah, let's talk about that here in just a second. Uh, clutch pedal. I've got that a lot better. Um, I put a makeshift stop on the clutch pedal arm. I'll show you. Haven't completely bled the brakes yet. They're actually pretty good. I just gravity bled them. They're pretty good. This was more of a pain in the ass than what it should have been. Rear shocks. Jesus, what a mess. So speaking of mess, um, yeah, this place is a freaking disaster. Had to go to a buddy of mine's to pick up a headlight bucket because for some reason I had two right hand headlight buckets, <laughs> not a left and a right, two right hand headlight buckets. I don't know how that happened. I had them from a 70, won't work for a 67 through 69. I had them through it for a 64, went out back and robbed one off my couple off my 64, hoping that would nope. That wouldn't take care of it either. So, had to run out to Blue Springs. A buddy of mine um, hooked me up. So, I got a left one. So, I got my headlights in. They're working. We're all good to go. Marker lights are working. My uh, lenses are horrible. I mean, this one's usable. Still not good. This one is a disaster. So, I'm going to run to LMC, grab a couple of those. Um... Had hoped to get the body work done on my filler and get it primed. Didn't. Uh, did get my bumper straightened up some the other night. So it had some buckles right here on both sides. Got those heated the other night over at Wendell's house. Um, so we've got just a little bit of work to do around the studs. And we'll be good to go. A little bit of body work there. Sand the heck out of this thing. Uh, throw some epoxy primer on it. Same with the bezels. I've got both of them out, fit them both. They fit pretty good. Got a couple dings, body work those just a little bit. Black epoxy. Okay, where else? It's been a while since I picked up the camera. Um, <laughs> this was fun. What I did several videos ago, um, I had trimmed out this lip. And there was only about a quarter of an inch left. Maybe not even that. So what I did is I kept rolling and kept rolling and kept rolling using a tool that I made for rolling. Piece of PVC. What is that? Inch and a half. I don't know. Inch and a half, two inch, inch and three quarter PVC. And I flattened the end, heated it up and flattened it. And I rolled and rolled and rolled. And then I pulled off and then I pulled out the pogo stick. And I tugged and I, oh, it was a disaster. Um, long story short, I've got turning clearance. Maybe on a big bump and a turn at the same time, it might rub this a little bit, but I'm not concerned about it because I rolled this edge. And when I say rolled, I tucked it. I kind of crimped it, not crimped it. Had the wheel off and I hammer and dollied it. Kind of smoothed it out a little bit because I'd had it pretty distorted, so. Long story short, I've got turning clearance, and this side was worse than the other. This side was a real bear. I don't know if this fender isn't quite shaped like the other, and I just didn't notice it, but this side was a problem. So, we're good to go there. Um, sheesh, what else? The rear shock mounts were a problem. So, when I switched, I mentioned before in one of the videos, when I switched the chassis, the 67.8, um, I, I keep saying 67 or 8. I don't know which one it was. Let's just call it the 68. So the 68 chassis had a different rear upper shock mount than the 70 chassis. Well, I had bought the shocks already for the prior chassis. So had to um, get creative on that. I was digging through all my stuff trying to find some something that would work. And I did. I found my bolt bucket from when I unbolted this rear end out of that uh, Lincoln Mark 7 and I'd kept the shock brackets. I don't know why, but I'd kept them. 
and thank God I did because they bolted right into the factory bracket so I could use the different style shock that I had. So I got lucky there, but then I had to kind of make brackets for the rear. Um, and probably can't see them very well, but I had to make some brackets that bolt on to the U-bolts. And I know they hang down a little bit, but I don't mind that. But the bracket hangs down a little bit further. I can trim them, but I'm not doing that yet. I'm going to make sure this setup works before I start cutting any more of that bracket off. So we're good to go there for now. Um, that's the shocks I used. Um, what else did I do? Look at all this mess. I, I don't know. Shouldn't need all of this and and this is just the out here part let me show you my bench from cutting and modding and grinding and look at this freaking disaster i mean just stuff everywhere and it drives me absolutely insane so that's the update oh <laughs> don't laugh at me just just don't don't judge me don't laugh at me just don't 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 so I needed a stop for the clutch because I didn't want it going down any farther than what was necessary. So I figured out what that point was and I bolted on, <laughs> I bolted on a camper shell clamp to that pedal arm. Stop it. You're laughing at me. I can hear you already. So the clutch goes down that far. This is not... This is temporary to make sure that this solves my problem. So I added that spring right there and I put a stop on it. So I don't push it all the way to the floor. I push it right there. And that is just in front of that funky pivot point that I had the problem with where it kind of jerks. It's got a lull. I can't even, I can't even explain it, but... Once I'm sure that this works, then I will probably put a stop up in here somewhere that's not visible. But I've got this clamped on there now, and it's working. And you know how I know it's working? Because I've driven it a little bit, just around the yard, um, just to make sure that everything's good. So that's a cool feeling. After I've been working on this truck for I don't know how long now, to actually... Drive it around a little bit, hit the key, start it, and just be mobile. Yeah, I like it. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm done. I'm whipped. I'm not even going to clean up this mess. So I'll do that later. So next, next time I'm out here, I will be working on the body stuff in the front. Get that knocked out. And I'm going to have to put a windshield and back glass in it if it's going to the Front Yard Nationals. I don't know. i got to get some time on it. So I'm going to wrap up the front end, get that stuff together, and then I'm going to drive it a little bit. I'll run it around without a windshield in it if I have to. Or I can put the windshield in it. But i got to get some time on it to see if it's going to drive, shift, run, and just... And do what it needs to do to go basically 150 miles from here to Laronda's and back. Stay tuned for that. Body work done. Well, good enough for some epoxy primer. And to get this thing moving. Might have a couple of pinholes to touch up and glaze. But let's turn these things the same color as the grill. Flat black for now. And look at this. Still. And you're not a damn help at all. Still a mess. Just rolling with it. It's going to be fine.